Hello, I'm Glenn Murphy with Burroughs Welcome Fund Science Explorers. Today we're here in Raleigh, North Carolina to meet Keith Wenninger, Professor of Biophysics at NC State University. Dr. Wenninger specializes in single molecule biophysics. That is, he uses custom-built microscopes and lasers to watch tiny proteins and DNA molecules in action, something that would have been impossible just 10 years ago. Dr. Wenninger, thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Cheers. Uh, so what exactly is single protein biophysics? I mean, how does it differ from, say, biology or biochemistry? Well, in single molecule biophysics, we literally look at one molecule at a time. And that's different from typical bi biochemistry that goes on in test tubes because in a test tube, all of those molecules may not be the same and they may not be doing exactly the same thing at the same time. And so by watching each one individually, you can learn more about what they're doing. So what brought you here to North Carolina? Uh, to be part of North Carolina State University. It's a good place for me to do my work and I like the area because of all the big universities and companies here. It's lots of good opportunities for research. Great. So do you mind taking us inside your labs, giving us a peek around, introduce us to your team? Absolutely. Great, let's go. Um, so who are these folks and what are they up to? Oh, these are graduate students and postdocs who work in my lab, work with us, and they do all of the hands-on work, really, to, to make these measurements. Hi, I'm Liz. I'm a biochemist from Wisconsin. Hi, I'm Roy. I'm a biophysicist from China. Wow, so this is a pretty serious-looking piece of kit. We've got lasers, we've got mirrors all over the place. What exactly are we looking at here? Well, the way we make measurements on these proteins is that we attach fluorescent dyes to the proteins, mm -hmm. and those fluorescent dyes interact with laser light that we send in and then they glow in different colors and so the way we make the measurements we actually measure the color that they emit but all of these lasers on the table are used to probe the proteins and to turn on these dyes and so we have a, a lot of different colors of lasers that these mirrors can all manipulate the light and route them into the microscope at different places cool. and send them onto the proteins. Cool. So why can't you look at the proteins just under the microscope? Uh, these proteins are way too small to be seen by an ordinary microscope. And so that's why we use these tricks where instead of actually looking at it, we measure the color of light that they emit and can use that to tell how they're moving on a very, very short length scale. Hmm. So what's the most exciting discovery you've made so far with all this gear? Ah, well, recently we've been able to see how some of these DNA repair proteins are actually changing shape and moving when they find an error in DNA. And so by understanding this sort of mechanical motion of the proteins and how they move, we get an idea of how they go ahead and repair the errors in DNA. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Join us for part two, where we'll learn a little more about DNA repair and see how this research could one day help cure a common and deadly type of cancer. Serious knowledge coming right up.